All right, ready? Three, two, one. We have spoken. Bop, ba, da, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Welcome to We Have Spoken, the Geek vs. All Mandalorian based podcast based on Disney Plus's The Mandalorian. Not to be confused with ABC Family's The Mandalorian or like A&E's The Mandalorian. That would be, a f- those are actually really good ideas for series now that I think about it. Like just, tr- I guess that's kind of him now though. Like they're, he's traveling. Anyway, um, I'll come back to that later. I'm Josiah Leroy with me, Tom Colbert. Hello. Jimbo, Jamie Hi. Leroy, no relation. Oh, yeah, no. So Hi. we just watched uh, Chapter 5 of The Mandalorian. Uh, past the halfway mark of the season here, we've got uh, some new characters, some some classic trilogy and prequel trilogy era uh, callbacks. But first, we'll go through just a uh, snapshot immediate reactions. Uh, what did you guys think of the episode? What did you like? What you didn't like? Tom? Um, I, I like this one. I like everything that they're doing so far. Um, this was a Dave Filoni episode. It was. Which is fantastic. Love everything he does, as I always say. Um, the episode definitely was slowed down a little bit, but it kind of gave us, you know, some more, you know, exploration of, you know, Tatooine and, you know, the characters that we should be expecting and a lot of a lot of trust building and, you know, him still making allies and making enemies as uh, the show progresses. So, I thought it actually paced better than Chapter 4. It did. But as far as other episodes, I think it slowed down slightly, but picked up, but still slower. Mm-hmm. Jamie, what do you think? I like this one a lot. Um, I feel like they are doing really good with keeping the episodes as their own stories rather than, like, making them a string of things. I mean, obviously, there's, like, an underlying theme. There's the same characters, but each episode is its own. And I also thought it was interesting that they kind of tied everything up in a neat bow at the end. I liked it, but I also didn't like it. I don't know. I kind of felt like maybe they could have kept that that character. I don't know his name. D- is, does he have a name? Rookie. <laughs> uh, yes. Rookie? Yeah. It is. Hang on. Give me a second. I just hit it. Um, I, I, with regards to him, I was fine with him. Uh, like he wasn't a great. I didn't think he was a great character. I would have liked to see forever, but I think that Toro, uh, Toro. But if he had, you know, come back in a later episode and like made complications for the Mandalorian, that would have also been good. Yeah, I think that I was fine with him. Kind of ended up where because <laughs> I didn't like the character. Yeah, no. Um, but let's start off. Uh, that intro sequence. So we get a little bit of a space battle kind of for the first time in Mandalorian. We've gotten some space uh, visuals so far, whether it's just him going to a different planet in the Razor Crest. Uh, what do you guys think of this kind of dogfight between the Mandalorian and the, some unknown other bounty hunter? Uh, it was it was different. I didn't really expect the episode to start off that way. Uh, I liked that they were just kind of like in the middle of nowhere in space and there wasn't, you know, asteroids or planets or anything in the background. It was kind of like a like, like a lonely feeling of being like, okay, it's just these two guys yeah. in the middle of space and they're fighting, you know. Um, Nothing too remote nearby Yeah, that I mean, we know of. Until the end when we see them kind of drifting towards the planet there. Um, but no, it, it was, you know, good effects for what they were doing. Um, I liked how they were showing, you know, him maneuvering kind of, pulling some things out to kind of survive this battle. He was definitely losing at first there. Yes. <laughs> he was definitely getting lit up by the other ship there. Um, oh, I thought it was cool that he had a ship-sized disintegrator. He oh, was able yeah. To do that. Yeah. Um, I I didn't love the the fight. I liked it, but I, I thought it, the effects were kind of okay. Um, at, I don't know. It, it was less movie quality, but they still did a good job with it. For sure. Yeah, with the budget they had, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I mean, $15 million an episode is nothing to sneeze at, but still, um, they did a pretty good job overall. I thought um, it was kind of funny how he's losing the fight and he's taking all the damage to the Razor Crest, and then really the bounty hunter uses his line, that, you know, I can take you in warm or I can take you in cold. And that was that was the thing that set him off so that he kind of like breaks. backs into him. <laughs> I don't know. Like He, he, he could have done that before. But uh, I, I like that we did see a little bit of a dogfight because I didn't think we'd see it uh, throughout the series. Yeah. So the planet nearby, I uh, kind of had heard this a rumor a little ways back, and I'm happy that it was true. We find Tatooine. Uh, so um, I think they say most Eisley mm-hmm. when they're on the intercom. Sons, yeah. uh, so that was pretty cool. 
I love uh, in anything Star Wars when they go back to old uh, scenery, whether it's a, a planet or a character throwback. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, we get to Tatooine and we see uh, really a lot of the landscape here. But most notably, we pull into Docking Bay 35. So not 94, like uh, Han Solo and A New Hope. But um, Docking Bay 35, and it's run by... So Amy Sedaris is the name of the actress. Do you guys know, I don't know if you looked, what other film or TV show she's from that comes to mind? Uh, I do not. The first thing I thought of, though, was Carla from Cheers. I thought so, too. I, was like, I 100% that, thought no that way was her. It's her, but it looks just promise? like her, like the, just the personality <laughs> and everything, and I loved it. So, I totally thought that right away. Loved the character That's that so she funny. played. So, Jamie, do you know where she's from? No. Uh, I've looked it up. All right, so don't look at the computer yet. So we'll <laughs> we'll put a, a picture on for everyone at home. But uh, so <laughs> no, I'm going to show you who she is. Three, I'm two, one. You can look at the computer. She's an elf. Oh my goodness! Ooh. Oh so, yes. Uh, his assistant, sense. I believe. Yeah. Was that or maybe secretary? Yeah, I think yes. it's his secretary. Uh, so oh, funny. lady with the uh, kind of wavy uh, blonde hair from Elf, uh, Buddy's dad's secretary. <laughs> you'll you know her when you see her. I uh, will put her right on screen if you are watching the I video version of this. The way she spoke was familiar. That's that's so funny. I liked your character a lot. Me too. I, we may never see her again. I know. Uh, unless they come back to Tatooine. But uh, what I mean, what do we think of them using Tatooine as a as a base here? Kind of almost like a greatest hits of sorts. <laughs> um, I I liked it because last time we saw um, Tatooine in the movies. I mean, besides when they go to. You know, Jabba's palace, that's all still under Empire rule. Yep. So when they first get to Mos Eisley, Mos Eisley what we see is all the stormtrooper helmets lined up, mm. um, and they're all on the pikes, and they're all bloody because, you know, there's heads in there. So, you know, the Empire fell, and they kind of re regained their uh, outer rim planet here. So that was kind of cool to see that kind of all come back. Um, and then that initial bar scene, which I'm sure we're going to get to. Yeah, let's dive um, into that. So uh, the cantina. Yeah. We get into the cantina, which is wonderful. Got uh, some shots uh, around the cantina of different aliens and creatures that are in there, mm -hmm. individuals. And uh, is there music playing in the background? A little bit of music playing in the background. There must yeah. be, but it it's wasn't It's not the anything, modal nodes. It wasn't anything recognizable. Yeah, It's not figuring Dan in the modal nodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest name. <laughs> uh, but uh, it looked pretty authentic to me. Yeah. yeah. We got a new bartender. That guy probably Droid. died. Oh, yeah. Or retired. <laughs> it was a long time ago, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Oh, no. No, I've got that all mixed up. So this is probably about eight years after A New Hope. So either he yeah, died, retired, I don't know. Yeah. He did something. But it's a new droid. It's and a droid, You yeah. recognize this droid from Return of the Jedi? Yep, he was the uh, torturing droid, right? <laughs> yeah. He was torturing the gonk droid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a jerk. Uh, probably not the same one, but uh, maybe. You never know. Maybe Could he fell be, out of favor yeah. with the torture chamber yeah, and all that. He got laid off at the torturing <laughs> <laughs> Java's palace yeah. after Java died. He fell on hard times when <laughs> yeah. Java cell barge went up in flames. <laughs> he has to be a lonely barkeep. <laughs> <laughs> so the Mandalorian runs into Toro, uh, a character here that, um, eh, again, we kind of just touched uh, on him a little bit, but leave or take for me. Yeah. Uh, he drove the story pretty well, but I, yeah, I didn't really like him. <laughs> I see, uh, I was telling them beforehand, if you know who Colin Moriarty is, a young Colin Moriarty, that's who this guy is, uh, formerly of IGN and, and kind of funny, uh, kind of a, an interesting resemblance. So they, what I thought was funny was they sit at the table where Han fries Greedo, right? And his feet are up just like Han's yeah. when he meets him. Yeah. And a lot of nods there. He, um, I loved all of it. I, I thought that was wonderful. We get kind of out to the, the landscape here um, and see what I thought were some beautiful shots of the, the Tatooine desert. So just Tatooine, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but the Tusken Raiders thing, I uh, when they, they come up on the Tusken Raiders and he says, you can tell them yourself. Oh, man, I, I shouted yeah. out out loud. Lauren was in the kitchen and I went, Woo! <laughs> I was like, they're close. <laughs> So I had this feeling he was going to be right there because, like... Oh, man, I didn't like that at all. Just like when Luke's looking through the binox and he's... The raider's right there in his yeah. face. I was like, that's going to... They're going to be right They're there. They're slippery sons of guns. <laughs> I, I like that we so saw, um, you know, Mandalore not jump... Sorry, the Mandalorian not jumping 
just right to a gunfight with you know the Tuscan Raiders. It kind of shows that he you know has you know some respect for you know life itself, and he's like you know we we can just give them something and negotiate with them and get through this without having to you know blast our way through it. Um, of course, he negotiates with someone else's stuff, but it works. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's fine. but I mean, I'm, I'm assuming he's just kind of doing like a, the sign language of the people. I mean, I'm not sure if Tuscan readers. I guess that's how signs. they communicate. I was gonna say, I mean, do they have a language, or uh, if that's like, like a, a verbal language, of, or that's like a form of basic as well, where they can just kind of communicate that way. So it was interesting to see that because yeah. we never saw that before in the shows before or movies. Yeah, I don't know how they they uh, they communicate. Um, I I must assume that's that's it. I don't know the story there, but I thought that was a, interesting because it's the first time that anyone's talking to a Tuscan Raider and they're not trying yeah. to kill someone. Negotiating rather than yeah. just like attack. Visuals on that again, awesome. Uh, just so many callbacks. I got giddy in seeing those. <laughs> um, so they're they're on the chase for um, Fennec. So this is Ming Na Wen's character. Ming Na Wen, you probably most notable from Shield. Was it Miranda? Am I making that up? Melinda. I'm sorry. Melinda. Melinda is the name of her character. And that's she's a wonderful actress, so it was really good to see her in this, too. And I liked her character a lot. Do you know if, if she's actually the original voice of Mulan from the 1998 movie? No, I did not. She she's is. a Disney princess. I did not know <laughs> that. That's impressive. That is. Uh, she, man, she, she's done everything now. <laughs> Disney, she's <laughs> Disney, she's in Star Wars and Marvel. That, that's impressive. That's the and trifecta. lots more, but just uh, <laughs> the first three that come to mind for me. <laughs> she, um, I hope we see more of this character. I know we'll, we'll touch base on this in a second. I loved her character so much as as a bounty hunter, and I I would love for her to kind of be this recurring rival. I'd love to see that throughout the episodes and maybe the the future seasons of the show. They just try to bring each other in all the time. <laughs> yeah, bounty hunters. They Steal they're always got to keep one eye on all of them for sure. <laughs> um, what did you think of her character in the limited time that we got her and and her interactions with Toro, as as Toro is kind of waiting with her in the mm-hmm. desert. So she was obviously showed her skill as like um, I'm mean just for surviving as long as you know she did based on how wanted she was by the guild. Um, like she, she shows that she's an experienced assassin, and you know she's hard to get to. She already killed the bounty hunter that was on the do back there. <laughs> um, she basically kind of set a trap for whoever else was coming for her, um, and she obviously can shoot a blaster pretty well because she was sniping him from yeah, oh yeah, x amount of meters from the top of that ridge there. <laughs> uh, so I, I liked her character, you know, as they, as they kind of showed that she was someone not to mess with. Um, I think if there wasn't two of them, they would have had a lot harder time because basically he used. Um, the rookie bounty hunter as a distraction just to get up there and like he, he knew she couldn't he could take the tactic her. of that yeah right like, the right, Mandalorian well, with the light there. oh yeah the flash grenades oh, yeah. so that's such a, a video game thing to me mm-hmm. like that you got to go in with your partner and you've got to flash at the right time or they've got to flash and I thought they did a, a just I love seeing how the Mandalorian thinks so we've seen him think in so many different levels in just the five episodes very crafty yeah he's tactical with his approach you think we'll get a, a Lego Mandalorian uh, like game or yeah. no? I don't think so. Mm. It'd be interesting. Well, I would love one though. Fun, I will see. I, I love, love, love Lego <laughs> games. We talked the other day. Oh, we wish thirteen thirteen was coming back. The video game that was canceled yeah. uh, right when Disney took over uh, Lucas Arts. Oh. That would have been a wonderful game. Um, her. So she ends up kind of changing the mind of Toro, right? Yeah, she she plays to his um his his wants and his needs and she says hey you can turn me in but that you know mandalorian's a bigger target turn yeah. him in I'll, I'll help you she did not realize she was digging yeah. herself into a hole there so <laughs> i guess my question is here may, like I, I must be missing something why would it benefit him to have killed her at all like couldn't he have still theoretically gone after the mando he could have gotten them both but not on his own and if she was still alive, I feel like Mandalorian would have taken over again. He was just like in control the whole time because this guy's such a rookie. This was his first job. I read it more as like tr- as trust issues as well as n- not wanting to share the glory. So no loose ends sure. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I understand because I was thinking, did she have to be alive? In I terms of for the, her bounty, they referenced. I thought she had to be alive. He did say she's no good to me, dead. I, see, I imagine that I heard that. Yeah, no, no. And no, I was like, wait a sec, because I just watched Which Empire. Tom said that was a reference, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah. Boba Fett. Yes. Exactly. So 
I, th- I totally thought I imagined it. No. Okay. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it did happen. <laughs> this is not some inception like BS. I nope. actually, this happened. Okay, great. Ton of references in this episode. Yeah. So that was another thing. And I was like, I thought that was bizarre. Even though he kept saying that the money wasn't worth it to him. He's trying to to score big so he can get into the, the guild, right? The Bounty Hunters mm-hmm. Guild. Yeah, so he's um, going after the biggest targets, which I think... And now the Mandalorian would be it, right? Right. Because he kind of s- screwed them well, over. She also told him about the child. Which she might have the, played her cards too much. Yeah, yeah, I think so. From the moment that he saw the child, when we were watching this, Tom was like, wait a second, he's going to know. So, you know, he didn't have a fob yet for the child because he was not in the guild yet, but, you know, he saw the kid, so we both kind of thought that's going to come back to bite the Mandalorian, which it did, yeah. but he got out of it. He's a terrible <laughs> father figure right now. <laughs> <laughs> he just leaves the kid wherever, you know, he's like, I'm just going to hope it stays here. In the middle of this dangerous town. <laughs> Even when they got there, he's like, where is it? Yeah. It kind of like wandered off a little bit. It they, always does. Every episode <laughs> it wanders <laughs> off and grabs something and is cute. They referenced um, Beggar's Canyon. Yep. Do you remember that? Uh, Luke, Luke me- mentions that. She called him a womp rat. Womp rat. Um, something else here. Dune Sea. Uh, so the, the Dune Sea is basically the, the region where Ben Kenobi lived. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we see at the very end this this figure kneel down next to Fennec, right? So do you think she's alive at this point? Or do you think that's a tease for that? Or do you think this is like there's there must be some importance to that figure going and finding her? So either she's alive and this character's gonna help her, or he was tracking her himself. Yeah. And now, oh yeah, it could and have now, been. And now that's he's and now he's gonna be wondering, hey, you know, who who killed, you know, this character who I who I need to bring back to you my own bounty. Yeah. Um, the only thing I thought of when we saw kind of like the, 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 what we heard and what we saw wasn't a lot on screen, but I thought it was another Mandalorian mm. based on the cape that was hanging down and the boots and the, you know, the clicking and clanking of the armor. <laughs> um, yeah, that could be. So that was my first thought. Um, obviously, I would love it to be, be Boba Fett, but it's highly unlikely. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably. Yeah. But uh, well, they went him. to Tatooine, and I thought if 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 they were gonna in- introduce Boba, that would have been it. Th- right? That, that could have been it then. I mean, Five years after the Sarlacc pit, he there. could have been like, "Hey, someone's uh, oh man, yeah, on my territory. What's going on here?" That mm. would have been cool. It would have also been cool if Toro had like found uh, Boba's Mandalorian outfit uh, or armor. Yeah, that w- that would have been a nice little tie-in. Um, third thing, someone could be looking for Toro, who is now dead. I mean, it could be a father figure or a father character that hired Toro to, you know, get into the guild or asked him to get into the guild, and he failed. That's and true. now Mandalorian has a new enemy that's going to be after him. So, uh, Another callback uh, before I forget, the pit droids. Yes. So when we get Hit there... the nose! <laughs> I, I loved seeing them. As soon as they, they put the ship down, I, what a nice tie-in. So a little throwback to episode one. Dave Filoni loves his, his prequels there, uh, and that was, that was evidence of that. Um, I don't remember any other callbacks that maybe come to mind. Is that the Corellia reference? Oh, yes, yes. So um, they're, they've got the speeder bikes. That's a callback. to oh, yeah. Those are the ones that we see on Endor. Mm-hmm. And I guess kind of the one Anakin has on Tatooine when he's going to find his mom in Episode 2. But uh, the Mandalorian kind of looks at him and he's not impressed. So Toro says, what do you think this is, Corellia? Or what do you think they're from, Corellia? Which is mm-hmm. the pinnacle of shipmaking, right? The Falcons from there, the Empire had such a stake there for building some of their ships. Mm-hmm. It was basically a big, big shipyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that was another nice thing. And uh, we haven't really talked about Baby Yoda too, too much here. Not a ton to, to get through, but uh, I, I like how Baby Yoda is kind of the the underlying is the thing that holds everything together here. He's that, that one string throughout the, all the episodes so far, mm-hmm. the reason for what everything the Mandalorian's doing. Um, I guess where, where are we going with this? Do you think like it, what's it, there's three episodes left? Is there a happy ending in sight for this? Where was he headed when his ship was shot down? That's probably, <laughs> I would imagine to find another remote planet, like the one they were on in the last yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where they, they thought it was remote, and then the they were kind of discovered there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, his role right now is just, he's just a wanted man by the guild, and he's just trying to keep this child alive. Um, and, and the I baby's mean, still got a bounty, even though they destroyed the tracker, right? Yes. Yes. Because there's, mul- there's multiple tracking fobs out on 
the baby and probably him now too. So it's double mm. trackers basically. <laughs> I do love that they've how much they've established in a short period of time. Like we didn't know any of this before on bounties. Like how they established them, how they paid them out, except yeah. for seeing Vader kind of get them all together in Empire how they Strikes Back. Found their bounties too. Right. Do you think it's like a DNA tracker? Maybe. Because uh, how else would it be on a person? Yeah. I feel like anything else we saw in like the Clone Wars series, for example, um, it was always like a face to face or just like a holocom interaction where they're like, "Hey, you know, we're gonna pay you to do this job," and then like yes. Cad, Cad Bane would go out and you know go do something, and then they'd pay him credits, and that'd be the end of it. But a lot of that was with the politics, so that could have been like kind of like that. The what did he say in the first episode? There's no no puck for this one. Yes. So it could have been that kind of playthrough of like, "Hey, this is you're being." hired by political figures, you know, you're not going <laughs> to yeah. get any evidence that we hired you. No paper trail, so yeah. to say. So. I like that they've established that, that Bounty Hunters Guild is is a little bit new for us, too. We've heard about it before, but now it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a living, breathing thing. So I, I like how they've kind of created all of that lore here. I uh, saw the Stormtrooper helmets, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, throughout the streets, and that was from some of the original look-ins that we had at the Mandalorian before it came out. I hope they get back to or at least in these three episodes here, you know, maybe we'll wrap this up here and I'll ask you guys the same question. Like, what do you want to see here? How do you want to see this story evolve or wrap up? For me, my answer would be some sort of happy ending for the Mandalorian and or Baby Yoda. Uh, but I want to see what the remnants of the Empire was trying to do truly with Baby Yoda. I, we imagine they were cloning him, right? Yeah. Like all these theories line up and they make sense because there is some facts that will prove it. I want to get back more into that. Like this, the new republics out there, we know they're the governing body. I want to see more of these last pockets of the empire that don't associate with the first order that want to kind of recreate things and maybe try to do what they're going to do with, with, with baby Yoda and that species. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to see here as we move into the, the last three episodes of season one of the Mandalorian? Um, I also want to know what, what is so important about the baby Yoda? Is it because of his species or for sensitivity? I would say, yeah, that's kind of, that makes sense. So yeah, I want to know what they're going to do with that. And well, if they ever got it, the empire people, and then also, yeah, I'd like to see something good happen for him. He's so cute. Yeah, for He's sure. So Innocent right now. Yeah. <laughs> I did read Keep that. Um, I don't remember what the source was that we're going to be seeing um, a little bit, at least about, the child's backstory and what's going on with him Ooh. in this season. So at least we'll have that kind of set up for us. Do you need um, to have the species named? Nope. I like not knowing. It don't doesn't matter. I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we've never known right. what Yoda is. What's funny is Lauren time. said, like, because Lauren hasn't been watching. She's just kind of kept an eye here and there and everyone's supposed to baby Yoda. So she's like, so what is baby Yoda? She's like, is it related to Yoda? Is it just same species? And I'm like, well, we all assume it's just the same species. And yeah. we assume they're all four sensitive or very much so on the average. And then I mentioned Yaddle. And she's like, Yaddle? Who the hell's Yaddle? I go from episode one. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, there's a female version of Yoda, Jedi Council. You see her in episode one. She's like, I don't remember that. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, she's there. Go look. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what I would like to see would be I want to see this cleaned up nicely on the Bounty Hunters Guild side of this. I mean, all he has to do is get on Grief Karga's good side again, get the, the bounty removed, and then it's just him versus the Empire. Um, so yeah, he has so many enemies right now. So hopefully we can kind of see that cleaned up where, you know, the Bounty Hunters Guild, the Mandalorians can see the Empire is still around somewhere. And I think we're going to see how they're trying to come back to power, or if it's going to tie in anywhere with, you know, the new movies at all. Um, so if he can kind of wrap this up nicely and figure out, you know, how to unite these, you know, these guilds and his allies and stop, stop having so many enemies, at least all we'll have to worry about is the Empire. And then at least him and the child can kind of figure out what the next steps are from there. So that's what I would like to see. And then season two can be all about the Empire. And I think you need some resolution as you get into the end of season one and, and jump into season two. For yeah, you can't just leave it open. Presumably, I mean, they could. Arc. They could. They could just say, okay, he's just going to keep traveling planet to planet. And sure. I'd, I'd still watch it. So. Really for you. <laughs> I like what Jamie said. Oh, they're kind of self-contained. There is this underlying theme and it's just day-to-day -day life because that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Life. It's, it's got all these 
peaks and valleys, but um, I like that they're self-contained. You can watch one and not feel like you're, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next week, even yeah. though you want to get to next week. Mm-hmm. So they've really struck a good chord here. I've liked all the episodes. I don't think they've really had a misstep so far. That's uh, another two thumbs up for me. Um, any final thoughts that we didn't mention at all before we wrap up? I don't think so. I think no. we're good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we appreciate you jumping in for another episode of We Have Spoken, whether you're watching on YouTube.com slash The Geekiverse or listening in on iTunes or SoundCloud. Uh, quick plug we want to give, if you like Disney Plus at all, uh, we have an, a new show called Pluscast, and we just released a new episode of that. Again, you can find it on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. We talk everything Disney Plus, including a little bit of The Mandalorian. So you can check that out now. Those episodes are coming the first week of every month. So, three episodes to go here. Also in the middle of all of that, Star Wars Episode Nine. Uh, so we are ah. just a few weeks out. Whew. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Actually, about a week and a half. Kind of crazy. I'm getting goosebumps. Ah. <laughs> for Jamie, for Tom, I'm Josiah. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, we're going to do this off the top of our heads. Three, oh. two, one. We have spoken. This, this is, is the way. way. <laughs> Until we until meet again. Yeah, until, until, until we, we meet, meet again. again. No, until our paths cross. <laughs> until our paths cross. <laughs> that was close. We did we did good. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> now. <laughs> Come, they told me. I knew 